Hello everyone. Uh, today is a cool day. I've got a line on a 58 Chevy two-door uh, that's in a garage. The owner passed away and the son is getting ready to sell it and uh, he'd like to get it running and uh, he's okay with me giving it a shot today. It should be a, a cool will it run. I haven't done a car in a while or quite a few months um, and this one looks really nice. I think you're going to enjoy it so come on along. Well today has not gotten off to the best start um, my truck has given me a lot of trouble I made it about a mile down the road and I had to turn around um, not sure what's wrong it's it's missing and, and bucking and I'm gonna have to check that later so uh, I'm gonna take the the 54 Chevy out today haven't had it out in a while I'm gonna move all the tools over to it and take that I am loaded up and ready to go I don't like using this as a work truck, really, but I don't have a whole lot of choice today. Um, I do have another Ford pickup in the driveway there, but it's the seats out of it. So I can't really take that either. So this will have to do. You know, uh, the brakes in this thing for years gave me trouble and uh, I have a video on upgrading the master cylinder to a larger bore if you ever have an, have an old car like this and you have problems with the brakes being really mushy and a long pedal travel watch that video um, i'm so impressed with how good the brakes are now compared to where they used to be it's just right now this this is a perfectly drivable car maybe it's a good thing i got to take it out today because um, it's been a long time since i've taken it on any a ride of any real length All right, I'm here. This is exactly the type of spot where you find cool old gems on these long, long dirt driveways. So the first order of business is move these shelves that are in the way of the driver's door. Then I can get a look at it. All right, let's take a look at this thing. I think the grill is somewhere to be found and the bumpers. Uh, really interesting engine in this thing. It has a 348W engine, and it's W because of those valve covers on it. Um, this is not a 454 block. It's not a small block Chevy block. It's kind of like in between. Um, the, this is the uh, brother of the 409, the legendary 409, but this one uh, was more used in passenger cars and trucks uh, and not used for racing. It has the original generator slash power steering, which is super rare, super rare. Someone has converted it to power brakes over the years. The garage is a little tight, but I dealt with worse. It's very straight, although it's pretty much in primer and maybe the original white. It's pretty straight. to a hard top. And it's really nice dashboard. Really nice. It's a, a power glide, two speed power glide. Has a newer radio. It's got that smell, you know, that old car that's been, been sitting around a long time smell. Looks like there's no back seat. Yeah, no back seat. Um, Headline is decent, but looks like it's got a, a mouse hole over there. Um, 
I guess that's the original wheel. I don't yeah. know much about 58s. It looks like a 59 wheel, but maybe they were the same. You know, 58 is a one year only style for Chevy. Um, it looks nothing like a 57 and nothing like a 60. And that makes it unique. Probably you've seen a car like this before on American Graffiti. It was uh, Ron Howard's character's car. And really one of the coolest cars in the movie that doesn't get enough credit. It was the white one. There's the controls for the heater, the ignition switch. A crazy seat pack. I don't know if that's original or not. Very, very solid. Wow, very solid quarters. This is going to be fun. Hey, you can see what I mean about the one year only style. Oh, it's got dual exhaust. It's going to sound nice. I've already committed myself. This is going to run today. design on the hood on the roof again a one-year only deal these are just so unique they're really awesome cars and they just don't get any credit so I've got my kit here I've done this enough times I've got it down in science um, battery Look at how long it's been sitting there. Look at that. Wow. Wow. I'm not even going to try to do anything with that battery. I brought my own. Wow, that is stuck. That's where you put the oil in. That is stuck. So hopefully it doesn't need any. It's got. It's gonna say an aluminum intake, but no, I don't think so. It looks like the gas pedal linkage might be disconnected. Nope, it's connected, but there's some of the rod there. It must go to the power glide. It's disconnected. All right, let's get started on this thing. I don't really have a particular order that I do things, but. I pulled the battery out and I'm going to clean these up first. Very simply, you just use a thing like this, which is a circular wire brush. And you just clean them off. It's not stuck. Um, I can move it with the fan just a little bit. It's really hard to get in here with a wrench, but I am going to try to do that with a socket and see if I can turn it over. Um, two full revolutions, which is the best thing you can do for these. Because I don't know how long it's been sitting. Oil's full, completely full. It's dirty, but it is full. I'm going to get a good workout today because there's no bolt in the crank. So I'm going to have to use the fan and turn it like that. I've already turned it by half a turn, but it's hard work because of this fan shroud, so I'm taking a little break. I took out the first plug on the passenger side. It was super loose. I'm not sure what that means, and it's very, very foul. I mean, this thing was clearly running rich, um, and it's a really small gap. So I'm going to have to look at that in a little more detail. I cleaned it up with a rag, but that gap is so, so small. I'm going to have to adjust that. It's just so tiny. I can't believe it's getting good burn, which is maybe why it's so fouled. All right, what I did is I set the uh, gap to the width 
of my razor blade because I didn't bring feeler gauges. Note to self to do that in the future, but I've never run into this problem before. Um, that's way better, and I cleaned it up a bit with some carburetor cleaner, so this is in much better shape now. Passenger side plugs are all out. Is this your van? Um, they were yeah. all yeah. super narrow gapped and all loose. All? No, no. So okay, I'm not sure what that means, off. but the next step is I'm going to put a little bit of mystery oil on each cylinder before I start to crank on it. Then I'll move on to the other side. All right, I get the, the uh, air cleaner off. This is a carburetor I haven't seen in a lot of years. Wow. Um, I forget if this is a Carter or Rochester, I'll have to look. I just have not seen one in forever. Um, so I'm cleaning up the linkage a bit. Because it's a little bit stuck. That's much better, much better. I suspect this choke doesn't work at all. It's got a uh, heat stove choke where it takes heat off the manifold. It runs it in here. That was actually loose. So, no, oh, it's got points, which I love, is they're easy to set and easy to fix if they're problematic. And I'm sure these points are corroded. So that's the next task: is to uh, pull the distributor cap and clean up the points. To do that, you just got a screw there and a screw there, and you just twist them half a turn, and it's got a hook on it that unhooks from the bottom of the distributor and pops off. Okay, it is those hooks I was telling you about. So you just turn them half a turn, and you pop the cap off. This cap is not used very much. It's almost like new in there, but don't be fooled. It's always clean under here because it's supposed to be sealed. This one is not because it's missing the little door to set the dwell. Um, so I'm going to clean this out anyway because there is some, some carbon tracing in here, which essentially is just the spark debris from when the rotor spins around the distributor. There's the rotor that's got to come off. There's two screws, and then I'll be able to check the points of spark. Um, still don't know if this is a card or not. It's dark in here, so I can't really tell, but I'll figure it out. This is the rotor. That's where it connects in the distributor cap to each contact. It spins around and connects to the contact, which fires that particular plug. This is very corroded here. When you take these out, it's just two screws, and depending on what brand, the screws can stay in or they can pop right out. This one, if you pop these out, they can fall in bad places, so try very hard to keep them. What I do is I loosen them up with a screwdriver and I just keep lifting this so that they don't fall out. Somebody's already lost one, you can see that one is not original. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna take a little piece of sandpaper here, clean it off very lightly, just get all that uh, unevenness and, and carbon off of it and this will be good to go you don't uh, you don't need to scratch and sand these um, too badly really it's just a light coating that's on it that's what it's supposed to look like the, the carbon's gone and that'll make a nice good spark I also just hit the, the top of it with some carb cleaner um, this is Bakelite so the carb cleaner won't hurt it you know, in Chevys, sometimes it's better to just take the points out to clean them up. Um, they're so hard to get at because it's in the back, it's by the firewall. And this is called a unipoint where the condenser is part of the point, so which makes it even harder to get at the points because of this bar right there. Um, so what happens is, as the distributor turns, it's got bumps on it that open and close the points and when it's opened um, it lets loose with a charge because the electricity has nowhere to go which fires the coil something like that I'm no expert but these almost always points are corroded on cars that have been sitting almost always but it's easy to fix 
Just put a little sandpaper in them, go back and forth a few times, not a lot, because you don't want to wear them down. And that's it. Also, it's good to put a little bit of grease, tiny, tiny bit of grease on this rubbing block so the rubbing block doesn't wear out with time. So I'm going to clean these up and get them back in. Okay, the points are back in. I'm going to see if I can get them to spark. The distributor's cleaned inside. Um, we're almost ready to try it. Next step, I'm going to put the battery in and see if we can get some spark out of those points. Okay, time to put some voltage to this thing. Let's see, always careful about this in case there's a spark or fire or something. These, these cables are super, super old and a little bit short, but I don't see anything bad here. Um, let me make sure that these are actually right, rightly marked. Yeah, they're not. So I gotta, I gotta swap things around. Okay, battery's hooked up. No, uh, no sparks. That's a good thing. No shorts. I'm gonna turn the key on so I can see if there's any spark in the points. And okay, yeah, we're getting power because the fuel gauge jumped to full. Um, so we should now get spark. Let's see. Now we're only going to see spark if when I turn the this distributor, the center of the distributor, if we're on the cam and it's enough to open the points. So I may have to do this by hand. We get spark at the points. So I still need to put the rotor back on. Um, but I'm going to spin it over and uh, blow the oil out of the cylinders that I put in earlier. Before I do anything else at this point. This might make a little bit of a mess. I hope it doesn't. Alright, here goes nothing. It's in park, so this should, this should be okay to do. Um, it's got a semblance of a brake pedal too, but it should turn over now. All good. Turns over great. Okay. Okay, blew some oil out. Didn't make much of a mess, which is good. Um, it's inevitable. It's going to make a mess of some type, but it's it's not terrible. I'm going to turn it over a little bit more, make sure all the oil's out, put the rotor on, put the cap in, and we're ready to actually try it. Okay, cap's back on. Like I said earlier, it's supposed to be a window that covers that, but it's missing. But that's how you adjust the points on these uh, Unipoint point setup. It's really convenient, you know, to pull the cap. The uh, coil bracket was actually in the way of putting the cap back on right. Um, it only, once you put, get the cap on right without it even bolted down, it doesn't move left to right, and this one was. So I had to loosen this up, this bracket. So I'm just going to tighten it back up. Oh, it's just not the best location for it. Um, it's going to get in the way if I have to time this thing. It's going to get in the way. So I'll have to go with that later if I have to, if I have to time it. But you do need the coil bolted down well because vibration ruins them. It's still not that good. take it out and find a washer in this garage and put a washer on it. One more time, I'm gonna spin it over to clear the cylinders out. Yeah. Okay, 
that's good. That should be clear enough. Plugs are going back in. Plugs are in. Wires connected. Next is fuel. And then I'm gonna try to start it. So what I'm gonna do with the fuel is I'm gonna disconnect it here and run a feed line direct until it, see if I can fire it. Um, and then if it fires, I'm going to hook the gas right up to the, the fuel pump down here. Um, but I wanna make sure it fires first so I can eliminate any fuel pump problems from the equation if it doesn't fire. Okay, I've got my chainsaw gas, so I'm gonna just put a little down here and see if we can get this guy to fire off just a little bit. Put a little in the bowl. Like I say, if it'll fire, I can do a little more permanent stuff. That's, here goes nothing. There's no spark. Boy, that fuel pump's working good. Look at that. Look at that. It really feels like it's no spark to me. Because it's not kicking over at all. cap off and see what's going on so I went to uh, check the points and realized the cap wasn't fully bolted down I doubt that was the solution but let's try it got to come off. I got to see what's going on here. See if we got any spark at all. All right, it's hours later. I've been struggling mightily trying to get spark out of these points. But I think I got it. Uh, about to try to fire it, get the gas hooked up. Um, yeah, not too much more to say. It's It's go time now see if this thing will work. Um, ran the battery down, trying to get it started so much, but I've got my jump box, and I think there's enough life in the jump box to give me a couple of tries. So, I'm gonna, uh, first off, I'm gonna prime the, the gasoline hose. So what I'm gonna do is, 
Um, yeah, just pour gas right down this hose so that the fuel pump can pick it right up. Okay. Time to try. Put the jump box on the jump. Give it some chainsaw gas. And let's see what happens. Yep, let's hope this works. It's getting late. That sounded good. The dwell is off. Listen to that thing idle. It was way advanced on the timing, so I pulled that down. Uh, the dwell's way, way off. I haven't adjusted that yet. But that's because I was messing around with the points so much. But listen to this thing. It's running beautiful. This is the best part back here. Listen to that. Well, that was an abrupt ending to the video. Sorry about that. Uh, the last piece of footage that I was taping uh, somehow got screwed up, so I don't have it. But basically, all you missed was I was buttoning things up, the car's running great, and everything's cool. You know, uh, today was really fun. Not only did I get the car running, but I met the owners. They were really, really nice people. Um, 
I met a couple of people that came by. There was actually an estate sale going on at this house while I was working on the car. So occasionally an old timer would come by and talk to me and that was really fun uh, to reminisce with them. So overall, just a, a great day. Uh, really happy with it. Everything worked out well. It was it was a struggle, honestly. This one was a struggle thanks to not being able to get some, some spark out of those points. But uh, all good. Um, I've got more coming up. Um, uh, there's a there's a uh, will it run coming up about uh, a Ford pickup and hey maybe maybe I'll do a will it run on my Chevy since it died on me <laughs> earlier today um, but anyway if you haven't subscribed please do um, I, I've got a line on a few more will it run candidates so there's going to be more of this there'll also be some repair videos coming up um, so there'll be a lot to keep you entertained thank you and have a good day.